In this video, we'll be taking a look at Open Sesame. Open Sesame is a free open source experiment builder package rather similar to commercial packages such as ePrime. It's available from www.coxi.nl slash software slash open sesame and uh, it's a cross-platform uh, product. Uh, you can get versions for Windows, for Mac and also for, for Linux. Um, now if, uh, if you've viewed, viewed the tutorial video that I already have for ePrime, you'll know this experiment we're going to be doing. Uh, if you haven't viewed that video though, uh, it's quite a straightforward experiment we're going to be using. Uh, and it's the cat faces experiment, where basically we show people uh, pictures of a cat face, such as like this one here, and we ask them to make a judgement about that cat face to say whether they think that cat is male, or whether they think that cat is female. They've got to press one of two keys to indicate male or female. Uh, so this is the sort of format we'll be using for this experiment. Uh, we're going to start off by giving the participants some instructions uh, of how to complete the experiment. We'll then have the main experimental trial, which will be um, a fixation cross, maybe for about 500 milliseconds. We'll then have a blank screen for 500 milliseconds. Then we'll show the participant the picture of the cat face, which will remain on the screen until participants make, uh, make their response, male or female. We'll run through the experiment, and then when the experiment's finished, we will give the uh, participant a thank you message uh, to say thanks for taking part. Now, of course, uh, not much point in just running through this once to have a single trial. We want to run through this uh, a number of times. And so what we're going to do is we're going to run this particular section here 40 times. Uh, basically create a loop where we run through this 40 times with 40 different uh, cat faces, 20 of them being male and 20 of them being female. Now, this is one way that you might uh, visualise the experiment. Uh, another way of doing so is in a vertical format. So that uh, start with the instructions at the top here. Then we have this loop block here, which is basically for the uh, holding the experiment itself. That's the sequence in the trials. And then finishing off with a thank you message at the end. The experimental trials are just now listed vertically. So we have the fixation cross, the blank screen, and then the picture of the cat face. And all this uh, section here, we're going to run through that 40 times for the 20 male and 20 female cat faces. Now, the reason that I've drawn this out this particular way is that uh, inside of Open Sesame, when we're actually constructing the experiment, uh, it constructs it in a very list, uh, list view sort of way, so in a vertical sort of uh, structure. So as we go through creating the experiment, what we're aiming for is for the uh, overview of the experiment that appears in Open Sesame to be similar to this one uh, that's here on the screen right now. So let's take a look at uh, Open Sesame itself. So that, um, let's go and find it. There it is. As we open it up, uh, this is the uh, default uh, start state. We get this dialog box for our new experiment asking us what we would like to do when we begin. Do we want to open one of two templates, that being a default template, an extended template? You also get the option to open up some existing experiments if you already have any, or we can just browse through for uh, an experiment somewhere on your hard disk. Um, I'm just going to go with the default template. Uh, the extended template just contains many, many more uh, blocks or loops. I really want to turn them, they mean the same thing really. Um, and we don't really need them in our simple example. So I'm just going to go for the default template and click on start with the default template. And if you just look over in the overview here, it's just giving us a very basic uh, sort of experiment. We have uh, this new experiment, which contains all our general options for the experiment up at the top. Then we have one uh, sequence here, uh, which is the uh, experiment itself, which contains two objects, the getting started and the uh, welcome object. Now we're not actually going to use either of those two in our experiment, so I'm just going to highlight each one and just click on delete, and that just gets rid of both of them. Uh, so I want a pretty much a blank uh, experiment uh, to begin with. Just looking around the interface, we've got four main uh, components. We have a toolbar up at the top, full of the usual commands such as new, open, and save. Uh, we get the option to run the experiment full screen or run in a window. Uh, just one point to note here that if you're using uh, the Mac OS version, uh, as of Open Sesame 0.24, uh, you can't use running a window. When well, I say you can't use it, you can start to run the experiment in, uh, in, in a window, but I found that it would tend to it would just crash after the experiment is completed. It's a known bug and it's being worked on, but uh, it runs absolutely fine if you're running full screen, uh, which is the one we'll be using uh, for this example. Uh, we get some other uh, toolbar options up here that we won't really get into too much. Um, some ones that can be useful are like close other tabs. You see on this over, on this right hand side here, we've got this one single tab at the moment, uh, which is the general properties of the experiment. 
If I click on the experiment sequence, you see we get another tab. And every time we click on any of these items, so it's going to be unused, we get the tab up again, and then if we click on the welcome, we get another tab. So you can imagine, if you've got a reasonable size experiment, it's not going to take too long before you've got a crazy number of tabs up here. And so we can easily get rid of all the other tabs by clicking on the one that we want to keep. So I want to keep the general properties, then just click on close other tabs, and that gets rid of all the other ones for us. Uh, we get the option to show info, info in the overview. So this is the overview window here. And as you can see, find this uh, very hard to pick up, there we go. Um, telling us that the experiment actually contains no items currently, the unused items contains items, and it says that welcome uh, is, is a sketch pad display item that's going to wait on screen until the key press. Um, maybe it's useful if you start collapsing uh, items down, so if the unused items was hidden, at least it will tell you that it contains items. Uh, but at the moment, for this particular experiment, we're doing quite a basic one, so we're not going to uh, need to worry about that. So it's just going to turn that off. Um, then we get these other options over here to show various things. We can show the file pool, the variable inspector, or the debug window. Uh, the debug window you just use to help you debug any Python code that, uh, that you're running or inserting into the experiment. The variable inspector allows you to view the variables that uh, you specify in the experiment. Uh, and the file pool, we will be using this in, in this example uh, because it contains uh, all the files that are referred to by our experiment. In fact, it's a nice feature of OpenSesame that uh, when you save your experiment, you can actually save all of the uh, stimuli as well at the same time in one single archive file, which means that you don't have to worry about sorting out which files go where if you move uh, the experiment to a different machine. You just simply have to take the archive file onto the other machine and it will run uh, perfectly fine. That's the uh, toolbar window. On the left hand side uh, we have the uh, toolbox which contains some uh, commonly used objects. These are some of the most common objects that you use when you're creating experiments. Um, and also, click on the downward arrow, you'll see you've got a few more over here too as well. Oh, keeps going away. Uh, in fact, actually we'll be using the text display object uh, from the visual stimuli uh, subsection in this particular experiment. Um, Rather quite straightforward, you've got the uh, loop item which contains all the trials that you might use uh, in a particular block. Uh, we've got the sequence item, and this basically is uh, where you contain uh, the procedure for your experiment or for your particular trial. Uh, we've got the uh, sketchpad item which can contain images and text and drawings and so forth. Uh, there's a sampler item so you can play sounds. Uh, two other ones that we will be using in this experiment is the keyboard response. So if you want to collect responses from participants during the experiment, which I'm sure you'll want to do so, uh, you need to have this particular item uh, associated with a particular trial. And if you want to record the data that they make, you need to use the uh, logger item. But we'll see how these come together as we create the experiment. Next to the toolbox, we've got the overview window. And uh, this basically gives us the structure of the experiment that we've created. Um, and uh, you can see now it's in this vertical sort of format, which is why uh, I'm suggesting that for learning how to create uh, experiments of Open Sesame, it's worthwhile just having to think about how your experiment would look uh, in this kind of form. Since what we want to do is have this particular structure mimicked in this particular window over here. And on the right hand side, we've got the bit where we do all the real work with our experiment, where we set all the properties of the uh, experiment and all of the uh, objects that we drag in. So for example, the sketch dad, sketch pad display object, uh, it, which is going to use to display our cat face picture, it would be in this particular area that we define how that cat face picture actually appears on the screen. So let's get started with creating our experiment. So I'm going to click on the, the experiment thing at the top here. This is like sets the general options. And as you can see up here, it's marked up general properties. Um, you can actually give the experiment a name if you want to useful if uh, you're coming back to an experiment uh, sometime in the future and you haven't seen this before in some time. Um, and uh, you can specify a default description as well if you want to, uh, to say what the experiment is actually doing. We can specify the entry point. Um, we're going to leave it at uh, experiment, uh, which will be the uh, first item here. Um, now what's nice about this entry point, uh, ability or ability to select the entry point, is that if you imagine an experiment where you have, say, five different blocks, and each block can be, say, 10, 15 minutes long, um, if you run through the experiment and you're testing it and you find an error, say in block 5, you could have been sitting at the machine for over an hour before you actually found that error. You go off and fix the error, but then of course you're going to have to uh, run through all the whole other blocks again, um, which could take you up to an hour to get through just to make sure that you have fixed that particular error. 
Uh, what you can do here is you'd actually have to specify the entry point as being that fifth block rather than having to start at the very beginning again. So it's a, it's a very useful um, little tool to have. Best it calls it the first item to run. So this will be the very first thing when you click on uh, run the experiment. This is going to be the first thing that's actually uh, executed. Uh, we have the back end that you can choose from. Uh, it defaults to legacy. There are actually three options. Uh, there's one for uh, Psycho, which is to use the back end from PsychoPy. Uh, legacy, uh, which is the default, as I say, and OpenGL, uh, which uses Pygame in OpenGL mode. Now, if you're using the uh, macOS version, uh, as I said, as of version 2.24, you have to use the legacy uh, back end. The other two uh, aren't supported. However, on uh, Linux, uh, I've noticed that OpenGL seem to give me the best performance. Uh, I haven't tried the Windows version, but uh, at least on the Linux one, I can definitely say that all three options uh, do work very well, uh, although I did find that OpenGL was giving me the best results. That's say, because we're using the Mac here, we've got to stay really with legacy. Um, we've got display resolution here, so we can actually set what uh, resolution we want to uh, run the experiment at. Um, to leave it as default for the time being, on 1024 by 768 uh, pixels. We can also specify the foreground colour and the background colour uh, for all our objects in our experiment. I'm um, going to change these other way around actually so the background, the foreground colour sorry, becomes black and the background colour becomes uh, white. Um, that's going to give us white text on a black background. We also get the option to add in some timing compensation for any timing errors that your particular uh, setup produces. Uh, I'm just going to leave that at 0 milliseconds, uh, it's not the only point change in this for this example. Not least because the screen capture software will interfere with timing uh, no end anyway. Um, we've also got the option to show the script editor. So this is the actual script that's executed uh, by the program. Um, the nice thing about uh, uh, Open Sesame is that you don't have to um, worry about changing the script if you don't want to. And for this example, we don't need it. So I'm actually just going to hide it all completely uh, since we don't actually need uh, to edit, edit any code. So let's get started on creating our experiment. We just refer back one last time to the uh, structure here. We basically want something to display a lot of text on the screen, which are the instructions to the participant. We then want something to contain a loop of trials, uh, 40 of them in this particular case, in the middle. And then we want to create something that uh, contains some text uh, that contains the thank you message. So what we're going to use to do these, uh, there's two ways you can add objects to the experiment itself. One is to find the object that you want. And so if we want to display instructions to the participant, the uh, one we're going to use is the text display item. Uh, one way of doing it, uh, adding this to the experiment is to simply click on it and just drag it into the experiment overview over the top of the experiment uh, sequence and that adds in uh, the text display object into there. Let's give that a name of instructions and as you can see it changes the name uh, in here. Now I'm not going to enter any of the text in at the moment, uh, we'll come back to that in a minute after we've created the basic outline. That's one way you can add uh, objects to the, uh, to the experiment. The other way of doing it is to click on the sequence itself. And as you can see, it's got two options down here to append an existing item. That's one that we already have uh, available. So if, for example, I wanted to add the um, instruction screen twice, not make any sense to do it, but say I did, I can just click on uh, add the instructions and on the plus button, as you can see now I get a duplicate of the uh, instructions uh, object. Don't need that at all, so I'm just going to delete that out. The thing that I actually do need to do is to append a new item. In this particular case, I need to add a loop. Uh, now the loop is the object that contains all our trials that are used in the experiment. Um, so I'm going to click on that and then I'll make sure it's selected and then click on the plus button. Um, and it asks us here that a loop needs another item to run, usually a sequence. Uh, this is indeed the case in our case because we've got the loop that's going to contain our trials, uh, but what's it actually going to run inside that loop? If we go back to the overview again, this is like our loop block, but all of these items have to exist on a separate timeline or in a separate sequence. So what we need to do uh, when we're creating the loop is to say that we're going to use a, a new item and it's going to be a new sequence that's going to contain our exact trial procedure. Uh, if a sequence already existed that you wanted to use, you can of course use an existing uh, sequence. But I'm just going to make sure the sequence is uh, selected here and then click on uh, create. But as you can see now, we've got our loop here, which is going to contain all our trials, and then the sequence that's going to contain our 
uh, actual trial sequence. Uh, so that's that added in, so if I go back to experiment, I need to add in one more item, that's going to be the goodbye message. So I'm going to append a new item, I'm going to add in a text display and click on plus. And that's added the text display at the end. I'm just going to call this uh, goodbye. Like so. Uh, I'm going to rename the loop uh, object as well. Uh, we've got a single block um, in this experiment, so I'm just going to call it uh, block loop. And then I'm going to rename sequence as well, and I'm going to call it, uh, say, trial sequence. So if we just look at this, uh, if I just clap that down actually, you can see there we've got this uh, experiment object with instructions, a block loop, and a goodbye message, and that's exactly what we were looking for here. So I'm going to enter in some of the uh, properties. So for the instructions, um, I'm going to add in the text here that uh, people actually see when they uh, start the experiment. Um, we get the option of setting what the duration is going to be. Uh, now this can actually be an exact value, so you can specify a number here in milliseconds. Uh, it can be a key press or a mouse click. Now in this experiment, we just want it to sit there and wait until the participant presses a key, and then uh, they can start the experiment. So I'm just going to leave that on key press. Um, it's inherited the overall experiment properties with a black foreground, i.e. black text, with a, a white background. We can ch uh, change the font family from mono, sans or serif, and leave that mono, and an 18 point font size will be absolutely fine. Uh, I'm going to change the wrap line after 80 characters, uh, makes it more wider on the screen, and leave the text alignment uh, into in, at the centre, you can specify left and right of course. Then it's just a case of coming down to the box at the bottom and just entering your uh, instructions for the experiment. Uh, so I'll just type something in here. These are the two keys I'm going to be using for this experiment. Uh, the Z key for mail cats. I believe the N key for female cats. So we've got some basic uh, instructions there. And we've got the little warning here there because uh, we haven't applied any unsafe changes, so I'm just going to click on the apply button and uh, that's it. So that's our instruction set up. Uh, I'm going to click on the goodbye and we'll have uh, exactly the same setup here, I'm not really going to change anything. Um, I did have that as 80 before but it's not going to make a huge amount of difference this to uh, uh, our uh, example. Um, so I'm going to add in a thank you message. and then just click on apply. So that set up our instructions and it set up our goodbye message. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is look at the uh, loop itself uh, and think about what actually it is that we're going to be displaying uh, on the screen. Now as I say we've got uh, all these pictures of cat faces, so here they are here. Uh, we've got to have some pictures for these cat faces and I already have those actually in a folder on my desktop. Here's the cat face photos and here they all are. Uh, they're all labelled up F01, dot BMP, F02. These are all the females. As we scroll down, we start to get the males, M01, M02. So there's 20 females, F20, and that'll go up to M20 for the male cats. So basically, we need to indicate to Open Sesame that uh, these file names are the images that should be being used. And we also need to indicate uh, what key participants should be pressing if, uh, if they get the trial right. And uh, I also want to add an extra variable in that's going to indicate whether the cat was male or female. Now it is possible, of course, to uh, extract that information from whether people pressed and so the correct response was a, a Z key for male or an M key for female. Uh, but I'm just going to add that extra variable in to um, make life a little bit more easier when we come to do the uh, analysis later on. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can use the uh, variable wizard or add them in uh, manually. I'm just going to add them in manually for this particular uh, example. Um, and you get the option of entering a variable name, optionally followed by a default value. I'm just going to call it uh, 
but rather than the default value, I'm just going to call it uh, the variable names. The first one will contain the file name that refers to the uh, cat face picture. I'll call that cat. I'll add another one in, which I'm going to call correct response. And I'll add a last one in, which I'm just going to call gender which is going to just be a much more readable form of whether the cat uh, was male or whether it's female. Now, of course, we've only got one possible trial here, actually. Um, we need to create 40 of these things. Uh, so we go up to the cycles uh, box, where it's currently set to 1. I'm going to type the number 40 in. And when I do that, you'll see that we now have a total of 40 uh, rows in this spreadsheet here, uh, which can contain our uh, 40 trials. Just to look at these other items at the top here, because we don't actually uh, worry about them again. Um, it says item to run is trial sequence. Uh, we can change the uh, actual procedure that's going to be run uh, at this particular stage if we wanted to. Uh, but of course, trial sequence is the one I created for this particular experiment, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Cycles are just uh, mentioned. We've got the option to repeat the uh, block a number of times. So if we repeat it twice, for example, we'd end up with a total of uh, 80 trials. And then we get some choices about how we want the order to be. Do we want them to be random or do we want it to be sequential? And uh, I'll leave it on random, which is the default, because of course otherwise we'll end up with all the cats being presented in the same order to every participant. Next thing I need to do is add in uh, the details about each individual trial. Uh, just refer back just quickly to the cat face photos. As I said before, you can see they're called fo1.bmp, fo2.bmp, fo3.bmp, and so on. So what I need to do is indicate what these file names are in the uh, cells down here in the, in the cat column. So I'm going to them in, and, uh, but notice I'm not going to leave, uh, add in the .bmp. Uh, there's a particular reason for that. Um, you can add it in here, but uh, it's just going to save a bit of time if we don't add it in, because we can use a little bit of trick uh, stuff later on uh, to automatically add the .bmp for us. And it saves us doing a bit of typing at this phase. So I'm just going to add in all of the... Uh, file names, or at least the first part of all the file names for the cats. One thing I have noticed at this stage is that uh, when you've actually typed like that in uh, F17, you can't press the down arrow to actually just move down to the next cell, you actually have to press enter first and then move down. So if you're used to using a spreadsheet um, where you can just press, hit the down arrow to enter in the data, uh, you can't do that in this uh, particular data editor. Uh, so that's all the female cats. Now I'll add in all the male cats. And there we go. So we've got our 20 males and our 20 females. Uh, in the correct response column, we need to put down the key that the participant should be pressing in order to get that particular trial right. Uh, for the females, uh, we want them to be pressing M. And then I'll just use a bit of copy and paste to try and speed that up. And then for the males, we want them to press the Z key. There we go. And the final thing, I'll add in the uh, human readable form of the gender of the cat.
Okay, there we go. So that specified all the uh, particular things that uh, Open Sesame will need to know in order to be able to uh, run our experiment. Now, what we can do is when we actually create uh, the things relating to the uh, cat face picture, is that instead of specifying uh, the exact file name that should be displayed, we can actually use this particular variable up here. Uh, the variable now is called caps, um, in order to determine which picture should be displayed upon the screen. So likewise, when we want to collect the responses of the participant, uh, we can just say refer back to the correct response column and pull out whichever trial it was that was running to find out whether it should be a Z or whether it should be an M. And likewise, gender will be pulled out, although we don't actually need that to run the experiment, that's just more for the data file to help us actually uh, make sense of the data file at the end. So the next thing to do is actually create our trial sequence. So I'm going to click on the trial sequence here, and we're going to add in the uh, objects using the uh, append new item uh, method. Uh, the first one we need is a uh, fixation cross or a fixation point. Uh, a couple of ways you could do this, you could add in a um, text display object with a plus sign on it, but the sketchpad display actually, um, once you use that, um, it does have one nice little feature in it, uh, it's actually got a uh, fixation dot uh, object already built into it. So I'm going to add a sketchpad in to begin with. Uh, I'll then add in a text display which is going to be just a, a blank screen uh, that will be on the screen for uh, 500 uh, milliseconds. And then finally I'll add in another sketchpad which can contain the picture of the cat face. So that's basically uh, our overall structure of the experiment. So I'm just actually going to give these a name. Like fixation 500, the text display I'll just call blank. And there are other methods of doing that. I'm just using a blank text display because then you can clearly see uh, what's going on at various stages in this uh, experiment. You could have used a sketchpad object, of course, if you wanted to. Um, and then this one's going to be the actual picture of the cat face itself. Now I'm going to go back to the sequence because we need to add in some extra things here as well. Uh, and if you've used ePrime in the past, uh, this is one thing that's slightly different about Open Sesame uh, versus ePrime. At this point, it's probably going to seem quite familiar. Uh, what we need to do add, uh, here is add in uh, the ability to collect the response uh, from the participant. And to do that, we need to add in a keyboard response uh, object. So I select that and add that in. And also, if we want to record the data to a file, we also need to tell uh, Open Sesame to use the logger item and add that in. That means that each, each trial is going to be uh, recorded to the data file. Um, so there we go. Ooh. Now I've got too many tabs open, which is uh, too hidden. Uh, now what we've got to do is just uh, actually fill in all the details of our individual uh, objects. So we go to the fixation 500. This is the sketchpad uh, editor. Uh, it starts off with duration. It's currently set to a key press. Of course, we want that to be 500 milliseconds. Uh, so we we'll enter 500 in there, and we get some various different options that, uh, that we can add in. So we can add in lines. Uh, we can add in arrows, some text, uh, circles. Uh, there's also a noise patch. The one we want here is the fixation dot tool. So we select the fixation dot tool, and then move down. And you can see this got this grid here, and uh, this is going to be the center of the screen. Actually, if you look over in this portion here, it tells you what uh, grid value we actually have. We want to go to zero, zero, which is the center of the screen. Left click the mouse button, then we get a fixation dot uh, up here at that particular point. And that's all there is to it, to setting up that particular uh, object. So I'm just going to click on the close tab. The next one I'm going to do is go to the blank 500. It's just duration is going to be 500 milliseconds with absolutely no text. And apply that. Now, I say there's multiple ways you can do that. Uh, I'm just using this text display object so you can clearly see uh, that particular um, blank screen. Um, it's not going to harm the experiment at all by doing it that way. Uh, then we'll go to the cat face uh, picture or cat face sketch pad. Now, one thing that might seem a bit weird here is the duration we're actually going to set uh, not to infinite or key press or anything like that. We're going to set it to zero, uh, i.e., for zero milliseconds. And the reason is that what we do is we display the cat face picture and then get uh, Open Sesame to go straight to the keyboard response item. So uh, we want the keyboard response item to wait for the key press, not the cat face sketch pad item, which is why we set the duration to zero, which basically means display it and then just move straight on. Um, to actually 
put the picture of the cat face on, we need to uh, specify the image tool and then go down to the center point again and click in the center. This brings up the uh, file pool, which is where we need to add in um, our particular cat face pictures that we have. Uh, now we can do that by uh, clicking on add a file. So I'll click on add and just go and find my cat face photo. Now one thing I found about uh, Open Sesame is that uh, I can do a nice multiple select like so. So I've actually been able to select all of the uh, cat face pictures so I don't have to add them in one by one. I can select all of them in one go. I did that by selecting the first one and then holding down the shift key and selecting, whoop, didn't mean to do that. I'll flip the res, select F2 in that case because I've already added F1, hold down the shift key and click on M20, then click on open. And now all our pictures uh, have appeared in our uh, file pool. So I'm just going to actually specify any of, the, any of these pictures. It doesn't make any difference which one I actually select because uh, when I click on select, you actually see we've got one particular cat face picture has uh, appeared in here. Now, of course, if we left it like that, it's always going to show that one particular cat face picture. It's not going to change it depending upon what is in uh, the cat face uh, variable. So the way that uh, we change this is that we select, um, sorry, right click on the cat face picture itself and say edit. This is the only bit more complicated thing about using Open Sesame. Uh, and you spread out that window here. And this is basically saying to draw an image at this location of the screen, which is the center, this particular file name, which uh, is in those speech marks, so I'll just highlight the bit we're interested in, which is that bit there, which is fo1.bmp, which if you remember is the image that um, I selected from the list. What I'm going to do is get rid of everything before the .bmp uh, and put in, in square brackets, cat, like so. And what that's going to do is go back to the list block uh, or the block loop and actually uh, extract out, to it, uh, out from that list whatever was in the cat variable for that particular trial. So remember they went down in order FO1, FO2, FO3 or so on. Whichever one of those 40 trials is being run, it will take whatever is in that cat column and insert it into this point here. So uh, if we went through a sequential order, FO1 would go in there. Uh, if it was in the second trial, FO2 would go in there. So it's a, it's a variable that's always changing on every single trial. Um, need to put on the quotes again to indicate uh, .bmp. So it's going to insert the uh, uh, cat face name, then the .bmp. Uh, so that's why we didn't have to put .bmp onto every single um, particular cat face. I just got that in the wrong state, and it needs to go uh, there. Um, and that's all there is uh, to that part, so I just click on uh, OK. And it tells us here that uh, one object uh, is not shown because it is defined using variables. Uh, we can actually uh, see that in the script now. Uh, that's where the variable has actually been inserted. So as I said on the first trial through, if it was set to sequential, FO1 would be on the first trial. If we go back to the cat face, uh, back to the end script, you can see here that FO1 would be added in where this cat in the square brackets is. So it would actually read fo1.bmp. And that's the way that uh, the variables work for the uh, cat face image. And that's basically all we need to do for setting up the cat face picture itself. So I'm going to close down that one, get rid of a few of these tabs. Uh, the next thing to do is set up the keyboard response. Uh, the correct response, of course, is defined in the block loop in the correct response variable. So I add in the variable as we did for the cat face picture, and the variable is defined by the square brackets, uh, like so. So that's what those square brackets mean. Uh, allowed responses. It says that set allowed responses separated by a semicolon, E, Z, semicolon, slash, and so on. Now we're allowed to use the key Z and N in our particular experiment. So I put Z is the first one, then put a semicolon, then N. So those are the two keys that participants can press. If they press any other key, uh, Open Sesame will actually ignore uh, that particular key press. Timeout is set to infinite uh, because we want it to remain on the screen until the participant makes a response. Uh, underneath this, we have the uh, log up item. By default, it's specified to automatically detect and log all variables. Uh, in my experience, it's best just to leave it just on that and it will record every single uh, item that, uh, that, that, that Open Sesame knows about. 
and uh, it's probably best just to leave it at that uh, particular setting rather than uh, playing about with what it is that you want to select and what it is you don't want to select. One of those cases it's always best to record too much uh, than too little. So that's pretty much it. Uh, so this is actually should now uh, run as a full experiment. So first thing I'm going to quickly do though is to save it. Uh, so click on save as and I'm going to put this just onto the desktop for this cat faces and uh, I've got the option here just to save as open sesame files or the open sesame script and file pool. Uh, click on that because it actually means I'll actually get all the files that are in the file pool uh, as well, which will be cat face pictures. Uh, if I need to change the extension. And so if I quickly look on my desktop, see I've got the picture, oh, so the archive there. Look at the size of it, it's nine megabytes. So for that tiny little script, uh, it's not the only thing that's in there. We've actually got all our uh, full, pop, uh, full uh, file pool items as well, uh, which includes all those cat face pictures. So that's uh, creating a, a basic experiment. I'll give it a go running it. Um, no idea how it's going to respond to the screen capture software, but we'll uh, give it a go. Uh, we get to enter a subject number, so I'll just give it the subject uh, number one. Click OK. Then we'll ask where do we want to save the uh, log file. Uh, so I'll say on the desktop, we'll click on save and uh, see if we get it actually working. And there we go. So welcome to the cat face experiment. We'll see 40 cat faces. We've got to indicate whether the cat's male or female. Press Z if you think the cat is male. Press N if you think the cat uh, is female. Uh, press any key to begin. So I'll press any key, fixation cross blank screen. There's the cat face. And just taking responses, male, female, and so on. So there's the experiment uh, running. Uh, to exit out the experiment once it's actually running, just press the escape key and uh, it says we get an error there because the escape key uh, was pressed. Uh, but that's a, a basic experiment uh, inside OpenSesame.